My name is John Lash, and I am responsible for bringing the fallen goddess scenario to the world. Solely responsible. I welcome your interest in the home story, which describes the origin of the earth and humanity in a way that cannot be found in any other mythic narrative. Of course, there is no way for me to know the source of your interest, or the depth of it, for that matter. It may be mere curiosity that brings you here. You may have a deeper longing for something that you can't define, or you may be driven by a deeper passion to discover something that gives greater meaning to your life. Whatever the case, I can assure you that you will find here something unique and original. And whether or not it complements your reality and enriches and enhances you on your path in life, well, that is for you to determine. In this brief introductory message, I'd like to make two simple points regarding the home story. In my view, there are two things I can say at the outset that will be helpful for your orientation. First, I'll repeat something that I've said elsewhere in my talks over the past 20 years. The transpersonal fulfills the personal. The personal cannot fulfill itself. That proposition does not mean that the personal is in any way inferior to the transpersonal. It does not mean that you cannot fulfill your life without knowing about the fallen goddess scenario. Certainly you can if you choose to do so. But additional to your personal fulfillment, there is another dimension of life that comes to you uniquely through engagement with this story. Many people in the world, I find, through my years of teaching and conversation, are longing for a transpersonal purpose even though they may not be able to define or express what that means. That being so, I find as a teacher that people benefit from being shown the way to that transpersonal perspective. And that is exactly what this myth does. Second point concerns commitment. You will notice if you subscribe to the nine episodes that the narrative begins in short paragraphs and it gets longer and longer as the episodes unfold. So reading the first, second or third episode just in itself apart from the terms defined and the commentary is pretty easy and only takes a few minutes. But as you proceed deeper into the narrative, it requires more time and concentration. And some of the closing episodes are rather long and quite complex. The point I'm making here is that if you truly want to learn this story, it will require some time, it will require a commitment of your attention over time. Those who have come to know and love this story all tell me that they have read these episodes and reflected on them many times. So there is a commitment involved here. There is a responsibility that comes with learning the story, which is truly the biography of the living earth. But if you choose to make that commitment, 
you won't be alone. I invite you to join Nemata, either as a visitor or a supporting member. And there you will find a growing number of people around the world who are dedicated to learning and teaching this unique mythic narrative. And it gets better. In Planetary Tantra, there is a set of practices for participating in this myth. As a living adventure, as an experiment of interaction with the planet, your Divine Mother. As the introductory video explains, the Sophianic myth is like a film that is being written while it is being shot. So you, if you choose to be an actor in that film, become an agent in the screenwriting process. You contribute to an open-ended myth and you play a role in the direction of the story as well as its outcome. Bear in mind that I am not the author of the Fallen Goddess scenario. It comes from ancient sources and it comes back to the world after 2,000 years of suppression. Everyone who participates in the myth in its current and ongoing form has the role of an author and actor in how it plays out. No other myth in the world presents an opportunity like that. So, finally, in closing, I want to address a question that certainly comes to mind to everyone who encounters this myth. How come the entire myth in nine episodes presents a story of events that happen even before the human races appear on the earth. After all, if the home story is really your story as well, then you would expect it, of course, to present some kind of scenario of human evolution. Well, it does so but it does so in the further iterations of the narrative. What you have here is FGS 1.0, but currently to this moment today, the narrative has evolved to FGS 7.7. .7. And so there is quite a follow-up. However, the first part of the story is only about Sophia, how she designed the human genome, how she came to turn into the earth, and the many difficulties and challenges that she encountered in the course of her own experiences. Now, why would you want to learn about that, which may in certain respects seem to be remote or even abstract. Well, I leave you with this proposition. Suppose that you were an orphan and you didn't know who your parents were. You didn't know where you were born, what culture and race your ancestors came from. And suppose you had an opportunity to learn all that. Would you be interested? Or would you be content to be a rootless orphan, knowing nothing about your origins? The drama, the cosmic galactic drama of the Aeon Sophia describes your origins and tells you who are your divine parents. I will close on that note and extend my best wishes to all those who enter upon this sublime and unique adventure. <laughs>